This is Gina from RN2 Professors with a video for you for my OB series on antipartum fetal testing. In this video, I am going to review questions on antipartum fetal testing. These questions focus on the different tests used to assess fetal well-being, how they are interpreted, and priority interventions. I will show you how to determine what the question is asking and how to get the correct answers. Let's look at our first question. The nurse is caring for a client who is scheduled to have an amniocentesis. Which intervention is most important for the nurse to perform after the procedure? Number one, evaluate the need for RH immunoglobulin. Number two, clean site. Number three, administer pain medications. Number four, perform vital signs. This is an application question. The question is asking for the most important step after the procedure is done. You always want to identify key words in the stem of the question that will help you find the correct answer. In this case, most important sets the priority and after lets you know during which part of the encounter to focus on. Number one, evaluate the need for RH immunoglobulin. This looks like our correct answer. During the procedure, there is a risk for maternal and fetal blood mixing. If a woman is Rh negative, she should be given Rogam after the amniocentesis to prevent her Rh negative antibodies from reacting to Rh positive fetal cells. Number two, this is not the correct answer because the site should be cleaned of PrEP solution after the procedure, but it's not the priority action. Number three, this also is not the correct answer. Local anesthetics may be used prior to the amniocentesis to minimize discomfort, but pain medication after the procedure should not be necessary. Number four, this answer is also incorrect. Maternal vital signs and fetal heart rate should be taken prior to the amniocentesis. After the procedure, the fetal heart rate should be monitored to assess for fetal distress. Number one is the correct answer to this question. If a woman is Rh negative, the Rh immunoglobulin is administered after the procedure. Not administering may result in mixing of the maternal and fetal blood and increasing the risk of fetal maternal hemorrhage. Here's our next question. A non-stress test is performed on a client who is G6, T3, P1, A1, L4, 38 weeks gestation. After the patient has been on the external monitor for 30 minutes, the nurse sees three fetal heart rate accelerations of 15 beats per minute, lasting five seconds in association with fetal movement. The nurse documents this finding as which of the following? Number one, unsatisfactory. Number two, a reactive non-stress test. Number three, a non-reactive non-stress test, or number four, equivocal suspicious. This is an application question. The question is asking you to determine what the results of the non-stress test are that are given in the stem of this question. To do this, you need to know what defines the results of a non-stress test and apply them to the information that is given in the question. Number one unsatisfactory. This answer is not correct. An unsatisfactory test would show the absence of fetal movement or have inadequate fetal heart rate tracing data. Number two, a reactive non-stress test. This looks like our correct answer. A reactive non-stress test indicates a well-oxygenated fetus. Number three, a non-reactive non-stress test. This answer is incorrect. A non-reactive non-stress test is described as less than two accelerations or accelerations of less than 15 beats per minute or lasting less than 15 seconds in duration with any fetal movement. 
Number four, equivocal suspicious. This answer is also incorrect. This term is used when interpreting a CST test. Number two is our answer. A reactive non-stress test shows the fetus is reacting to movement. It is described as two or more fetal heart rate accelerations of at least 15 beats per minute, lasting at least 15 seconds from the beginning of the acceleration to the end of the acceleration in a 20 minute period. Here's our next question. The nurse is caring for a pregnant client who was sent to the hospital for a biophysical profile. She is 37 weeks gestation with her second child, has gestational diabetes, and complains of decreased fetal movement for the last 24 hours. Which action should the nurse take first? Number one, perform vital signs. Number two, call a physician. Number three, perform glucose test. Or number four, place on fetal monitor. This is an application question. The question is asking what action you should take first in this situation, making this also a priority question. The focus should be on decreased fetal movement for 24 hours. Also note who the question is referring to. In this case, we're focusing on the fetus. Number one, perform vital signs. This answer is incorrect. If the client was in physical distress, then maternal vital signs would be appropriate for the initial assessment. Number two, call the physician. This answer is incorrect as well. The nurse must first gather assessment data prior to calling the physician. Always assess if there is something you can do before you call the doctor or leave the patient. Number three, perform glucose tests. This answer is incorrect. The client complaints are of decreased fetal movement, not signs and symptoms of hypo or hyperglycemia. In this case, gestational diabetes is a distractor in the question stem. Number four, place on a fetal monitor. This is the correct answer. A significant reduction or sudden alteration in fetal movement is an important clinical sign of fetal well-being. The nurse should immediately place a fetal monitor on the client for assessment data and immediate intervention if necessary. Number four is our answer. The chief complaint is decreased fetal movement, so immediate assessment would be to evaluate fetal heart tones. Let's look at our next question. The nurse is caring for a client who had a contraction stress test. Which change in assessment requires immediate notification of the healthcare provider? Number one, no late decelerations. Number two, late decelerations with at least 50% of the contractions. Number three, accelerations with contractions. Number four, no contractions produced. To answer this question, you need to know the significance of the contraction stress test results and which ones require immediate notification of a healthcare provider. Number one, no late decelerations. This answer is incorrect. This is actually the desired result of the test. A negative contraction stress test exists when three contractions of good quality last 40 or more seconds in 10 minutes without evidence of late decelerations. Number two, late decelerations with at least 50% of the contractions. This looks like our correct answer because this is not a desired result of the test. A positive contraction stress test exists when there are repetitive, persistent late decelerations with more than 50% of the contractions. The healthcare provider would need to be contacted with the results of the contraction stress test. Number three, accelerations and contractions. This is not the correct answer. Accelerations are short-term rises in the heart rate of at least 15 beats per minute, lasting at least 15 seconds. Accelerations are normal, and indicate the fetus has adequate oxygen supply. Number four, no contractions produced. This is not the correct answer. 
This is not a valid contraction stress test because no contractions were produced. Number two is our correct answer and is the only answer that would require immediate notification of the healthcare provider. The nurse reports a non-reactive, non-stress test to the physician. The physician orders a vibroacoustic simulation. Which does the nurse understand the appropriate application of the vibroacoustic simulation to be? Select all that apply. Number one, clap loudly by the fetal head. Number two, apply a sterile drape to the abdomen prior to stimulation. Number three, apply the artificial larynx stimulus by the fetal head. Number four, limit the use of the artificial larynx stimulation to three times. Number five, do not apply the stimulus during episodes of bradycardia or during a deceleration. This is an application question. To answer this question, you need to know how a vibroacoustic stimulation is performed. This is also a select all that applies question. When answering a select all that apply question, think of it as a true false type question. Look at each answer, responding either with a yes or a no, or whether it applies or does not apply to what the question is asking. Do not group or link the choices to one another. Number one, clap loudly by the fetal head. This is not a correct answer. Loud clapping will not stimulate the fetus to move and is not part of this procedure. Number two, apply a sterile drape to the abdomen prior to stimulation. This is not a correct answer. This is not a sterile procedure, so a sterile drape is not needed. Number three, apply the artificial larynx stimulus by the fetal head. This is a correct answer. Fetal vibroacoustic stimulation is a simple, non-invasive technique where a device is placed on the maternal abdomen over the region of the fetal head and sound is emitted at a predetermined level for several seconds. Number four, limit the use of the artificial larynx stimulus to three times. This is also a correct answer. The fetal vibral acoustic sound stimulus should be activated for two to five seconds. If no acceleration occurs, then it is repeated at one minute intervals for up to three times. Number five, do not apply the stimulus during episodes of bradycardia or during a deceleration. This is also a correct answer application of the fetal vibroacoustic stimulator is contraindicated during episodes of bradycardia or during a deceleration. Our correct answers are number three, four, and five. Here is our final question. The nurse has admitted a client who is 30 weeks gestation with suspected intrauterine growth restriction. The physician has ordered a Doppler blood flow study. What does the nurse suspect if the results show an SD ratio above the 95th percentile for the gestational age, a ratio above 3, or end diastolic blood flow that is absent or reversed? Number 1. Decreased blood pressure. Number 2. Placental insufficiency. Number three, increased amniotic fluid, or number four, decreased fetal movement. This is an application question. To answer this question, you need to know the reason for a Doppler blood flow study and what the results indicate. Number one, decreased blood pressure. This is not the correct answer. Doppler blood flow studies do not assess blood pressure. Number two, placental insufficiency. This looks like it's our correct answer. The purpose of this ultrasound is to assess placental perfusion and possibly assess if the fetus has intrauterine growth restriction. Number three, 
Increased amniotic fluid. This is not a correct answer. Increased amniotic fluid is measured by ultrasound. Number four, decreased fetal movement. This is also an incorrect answer. Decreased fetal movement is detected by fetal kick counts. Number two is our correct answer. I hope this video helped you out. If you liked it, come check out our channel. Subscribe for free. Click that bell on the bottom to get notified when new videos come out. And come join us on our Facebook page at RN2Professors for more material and discussion.